Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not To Comic Book. This being your show, it's about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Batwoman. A great episode, a lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. I knew from the very opening with just, like, Alice getting what she wanted, I was like, oh. And then, like, the moment she woke up with Mary and Mary being like, oh, yeah, the Bat team found you and everything, I was like, oh, yeah, this is, like, all in her head, but I, I didn't know what parts, like, I thought, like, oh, the whole opening sequence, her doing her thing was a dream sequence, and then her waking up, I was like, oh, you never actually got the buzzer, they just found you pass out under the table, like, because I was like, did any of that actually happen or what, but then she had the buzzer mark, I was like, oh, so all of this is still a dream, then she's in court, and they're basically like, oh my god, like, everything that uh, Beth went through, I'm like, would the court really side with you like that? It's also Gotham, like, once again, like, you can't take anything at face value, because I feel like, I don't know if that'd be a defense enough regardless of whatever circum like I mean because also they paint it in a very positive light of like oh man everything immediately went Alice's way it's like no there's gonna be pushback against that but it's like just for the sake of the story it's like right like because in Alice's head it's like of course I'm gonna get everything I want but then you have like uh you have Ryan being like, yeah, it doesn't matter. Like, at the end of the day, you won. The fact of the matter is, she's like, doesn't matter even if you're different now. Like, you believe you are. But she's still like, you are You are Alice through and through. Because it is, she is, She sadly, at the end of the day, Alice was a victim. She is someone that was born from her circumstances. I mean, I think a lot of villains, I mean, I, mean, I think every villain is kind of a victim in their own right. But even in, like, I feel like most victims, in, like most villains in Gotham were just victims of circumstances that made them into who they were, so. But I just thought that was so interesting. Uh, and obviously it didn't last long because the delusion starts to falter when Ocean shows up and it's like, oh wait, this isn't real, it's all in my head. And it's like, oh, like, no, 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 why should you be able, you don't deserve a second chance. You don't deserve to be free of all of this. So... And that's the interesting thing, like, after all this time, why now? Like, why is her mind faltering now? Like, is it just that, like... Because I don't know if they ever really went into, like, what it is that's actually going... Maybe they did. I don't remember them ever being, like, expressly what's happening in her brain. So, like, maybe it's just, like, she's uh kind of, like... Like, maybe she has, like, a tumor or something. Like, something... Her mental health is deteriorating, and the question is, why? Because part of me is also, like... You don't think on some level like this was intentional. I was like, no, I guess it's just like maybe maybe there's something that runs in their family that um, maybe there's something that runs in their family that uh, she ended up catching that uh, not catching, but like it's something maybe that was like a there's a chance people like maybe there's a, a medical history of this in their family or something like that. And she just unfortunately ended up being the one with it. But um Even more so why she believes she needs the buzzer. Because she's like, once I get the buzzer, I'll be able to be Beth again. But I'm like, but that won't, that's the thing. Like, because she thinks in her mind, it's a cure-all. Like, once I become Beth, I'll get rid of all these delusions. But it's like, no, you'll probably be Beth, but you'll still be haunted all by these delusions. Like, I don't know if that's all going to necessarily, or to be fair, they, well, because Marcus isn't like driven by delusions. It's just like his the makeup of his brain has been changed, so I think it's a little bit different than Alice's circumstances. His makes sense why maybe it would change and basically connect the empathy back in his head, but I don't know if, like, these hallucinations and stuff would necessarily go away from Alice, like, even be upon becoming Beth again, so... But it makes her that much more desperate to find it, and she goes to... Uh, Mary for help because Mary she's like oh give me the medication and it's like the fact of the matter is I murdered someone because of you and she's like I'm like you wanted someone to help you lean into poison Mary, being poison Mary like I helped you I was there for you like I looked after you like a sister would but it's like no a real sister would have stopped me because Kate wouldn't have let her do what she did Kate would have stopped me from doing what I did and it's like because of you I ended up hurting a lot of people I ended up killing someone that a wife is without her husband two boys are going to have to continue to grow up without their father like and that's on you and obviously for Alice it's like oh yeah sure it's easy to blame me you you the, you're the one that wanted you gave in to all of this but it's like yeah like Alice didn't at any point try to stop her Alice made her lean into it because 
Alice didn't want to be alone because now she found a kindred spirit. Like her sister's not around. So the only other person, the only family she had left was Kate. And now that Kate wasn't around, it's like she had no one. She needed someone on her side so she didn't feel all alone anymore. Because, I mean, don't, she doesn't even have the rest of the Wonder Gang. So it's like she's legitimately all in Gotham completely alone. So she needed someone in, to latch onto. So that's why she wanted Mary more like her. It's like, oh, if you're kind of a sociopath like me then I don't have to be alone anymore so which staying on the Mary train I was quite surprised when Mary shows up because I was like oh that's gonna suck because that little boy saw Mary so upon seeing Mary he's gonna recognize her so I thought that was gonna be a thing um and then um and I thought maybe that would cause Mary to kind of back down because she was going to tell the truth but it turns out Alice already confess to it being like no i'm the one because she knew all the details because she knew what the body was she knew what mary did so she just took the blame for it because it's like right like i am responsible so like i you weren't yourself and she wants it i think just wanted to try and do some good because it's like right despite them not being on the same page anymore at one point they were and it's like she cares about mary now and so it's like there's still that part of beth inside of her that came out Upon spending time with Mary, it's like right. She hasn't had, she hasn't had like a sisterly relationship, a, a, a good, even though it wasn't healthy, a you know a, a sister relationship on good terms. At that, you know, she hasn't had that in a long time. So she had that with Mary. So she wanted to do right by Mary. So she took the fall for it. So even the sons, like yeah, it was a, it was a. I guess because it was dark, and so he never really got a good look at Mary, and. I'm trying to think, did he bump? I don't think that kid bumped into Alice at all, or at the very least, he probably doesn't remember the details. Like I said, it was dark, so he just probably thought it was blonde when he meant red, but still. So, Mary's kind of off the hook for that, but obviously there's still the guilt of everything buried deep inside of, like, no, it still doesn't take away the fact is you killed someone and that guilt is going to stay with you, so. But at the very least, um... Knowing like Alice made that sacrifice for her is something, granted, that kind of gets a little undone later on, but we'll get to that soon enough. I love that, um, the whole Sophie situation where Sophie was like, oh, someone's at the door. I thought it was going to be Mary. Did not expect it to be Jada, which I love that she's like, your mom almost saw me naked. And then, and then uh, you had, uh. Ryan be like, oh, I'm so sorry about that. But they're looking into stuff about like who that Marcus could be meeting up with. Lo and behold, who's one of the people he's meeting up with? Barbara Keena. I was like, I had to pause for a second. I was like, Barbara Keena. I was like, wait. Because immediately I was like, like, Barbara from, like, Gotham? Because I don't know if that's typically, like, what, it, like, Gordon and Barbara's situation typically is in the comics or most continuities. I know how their story played out in Gotham. Barbara ended up on the right side of things, technically, in the grand scheme of things. But I was like, Barbara, I was like, holy crap. So I was like, and they're like, yeah, his, uh, Jim Gordon's ex-wife, apparently their son, like, basically sliced one to pieces. The way Jada was initially acting, I was like, oh, it was actually a young Marcus that did it, but their son took the fall for it. But, like, why would that not come up before now? Like, I mean, Jada has the power and connections to make that happen. I was like, is there some correlation there? But it's like, no, this has to deal with the black gloves. It's like... This had, like, the moment the name Mario got mentioned, I was like, why does that name sound familiar? Later on, we find out why. Mario Falcone. I was like, oh, my God, Don Falcone's son. Because, I once again, don't know, like, I'm pulling from Gotham. I don't know uh, whether or not he typically has a whole bunch of children or not. Like, he had Mario, which Mario died. Uh, he had also had a daughter. Was it, it was something, I think it was, like, was it Sophie or Sophina? I can't, it's been a while. I remember she was played by Crystal Reed. But then the other thing that kind of went in my mind is like, right, they have a son named JJ, so there's no Barbara in this continuity, or it just, but I'm like, not unless that's kind of suggesting, like, kind of about to say, is like, once again, it's back to that thing of like, then that would mean like, Jim would have had to go off and have a daughter with someone else. I'm like, you wouldn't be naming her Barbara, I'm sure. But I was like, okay, it could just be like, maybe she has a different name in this continuity. Like, maybe that could be the justification. But it's like, I think it's leaning into there, there is no Barbara. But it's so, once again, this episode dropped so much that I'm like, wait, I thought I, I thought I had the Batman continuity in this straight in my head turns out i don't because this episode threw a whole bunch of wrenches 
Like, obviously, we have Alice confronting Kiki. I'm, I'm all over the place, but it's all circling back to the connecting point where, like, Kiki made a point that she's like, oh, like, one of the things she greatest her accomplishments is she helped the Joker bash Robin in with a crowbar. So I was like, wait, Jason Todd happened? I was like, no, 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 wait. Because Luke made a comment about Bruce having to do this alone. So, but the thing is, I have to try to remember, was that conversation pre-crisis? The conversation about killing the Joker was post-crisis, I believe. Like, I think Luke had that conversation with Kate post-crisis. Because, yeah, that was after she killed Carthright. He's like, yeah, notice how the Joker isn't around anymore. So, yes. But I don't... The conversation about... Bruce working alone was pre-crisis. They've never really touched... I guess because they were so busy wrapping up Kate's story, they've never really gotten to, like, whether or not they... I guess this is their way of being like, yeah, secretly we never talked about it, but, yeah, the other Bat family exists to some extent. Because, at the very least, that's suggesting there is at least a... Uh, well, because we know Stephanie Brown is in this continuity because Clue Master is here, but she never became Robin. But so at the very least, there was a Dick Grayson and potentially a Jason Todd, which means he hasn't become Red Hood in this continuity, not unless they're just going to keep him straight and dead in this continuity. Or it could just be a continuity where, I, I guess, there was no Dick Grayson, there was only a Jason Todd. Maybe. I don't know. Once again, it just gets my brain going like, wait, because I, I, I was so certain I had it clear in my head. Like, oh yeah, Bruce did the whole thing alone. But once again, because of Crisis, and once again, I think those lines were pre-Crisis, then it could be like, oh yeah, like... The Bat family is a little more extended. That might be also them playing a little bit with the field because I know, like, I don't know how many people from this are, but I know, like, some of the writers, I don't know if it's going to be, like, Caroline, uh, was it Dries? Uh, one of, like, the main people behind the show, uh, Batwoman, are going to be doing Gotham Knight, uh, the TV show. Like, that's kind of the inkling. I think it's some of the writers, too, so I don't know if that's, like, some... Because I don't think that's going to be set up in this continuity. I think that's going to be like its own thing on like a different Earth 2. I, I don't know. Not in like a O and Earth 2. I mean like just a T-O-O -O, um, meaning as well. You know, so I don't know. Because this episode just like dropped a lot of stuff like that. Uh, I was actually surprised when he ended up uh, that uh, Marcus showed up and killed Kiki. Because I love that. It's like, oh, Kiki's like, oh, you think you're the only crazy blonde I've had to deal with? I was like, what? Are, and then I, I felt like an idiot. I was like, what other crazy blonde have you dealt with? I was like, oh, you stupid idiot Harley. I guess it's because, like, sometimes I leg it's stupid. I legitimately forget that Harley's blonde sometimes. Which is so stupid because there's so many examples of her out and about with her blonde hair, but I guess it's like, when I think of Harley, like, especially, I think of, I don't really, because I guess because it was, well, her first appearance was in the animated series from the 90s, the Bruce Timm animated series, where she wears the very classic jester outfit that, it, you know, one of her classic outfits, but obviously more recent stuff features her, like, like she does, looks in the Harley Quinn cartoon, or even how she, how uh, Margot Robbie uh, portrays her in the movies, so with her hair, blonde hair out and stuff like that but it's like I don't know why it clicked it's it slipped my mind like it took me a second to be like right because she she's actually the one who also referenced Harley in this continuity as well being like oh yeah like the my psychiatrist it was Dr. Harleen Quinzel so it's interesting it, once again it makes you wonder where she is and once again if this is supposed to be the same continuity as Arrow and everything if it hasn't changed crisis wise um last time we saw her like once again there, I made reference to that cameo thing so like if that still is continuity to this continuity, then she's probably still locked up in like Argus or something like that. Tangents and all that. I was just, I mean, it all connects to just like furthering like the Batman lore. Uh, there was a few things. There's the Barbara King thing. Um, there was the Crown dude. I didn't know who he was. Then we had Jeremiah Arkham. I was like, interesting. Now. I'm familiar, like, mainly with the story. I don't know Ark, uh, Batman Arkham Knight story, but I know, you know, uh, Asylum and... Asylum and Cities story, but I don't know the Arkham lore. My only other experience, aside from the tiny bits I remember of the Arkham lore in those, is also the, um... Uh, Victoria Arkham situation with spoilers. Well, I'll just leave it at the Victoria Arkham stuff in Telltale. If you if you know the story of the, the Telltale Batman season one, you get what I'm referencing, right? Uh, which also ties in because spoilers, Harley's in season two. Um, 
But I'm curious. Like, I was like, oh, so he's an Arkham. I was like, oh, so that's interesting, kind of leaning into that, and for him to be part of the. Because I was, I wonder, it's like the Black Glove. Does that exist in the comics as well? Because I guess maybe this is their way of kind of almost doing a quarter vowels without doing the full blown quarter vowels. Because usually that involves like major families in the the uh, the and uh, Gotham's, like like the Waynes, for example. I don't know if they're typically part of the quarter vowels. I know they had. I think they in Gotham the show they did they were tied to because typically like the Court of Owls is made because like a big thing in Gotham is the five big families because uh, it turns out this like black gloves thing was actually started by Tommy's mom because it was it was because every one of them I guess like had like psycho kids because Tommy ended up being a psycho kid. And so it was about, like, finding a way to kind of cover up some of that stuff. Because it's like, right, if word got out about their psycho kids, then their privilege and their positions would kind of be given up. So they never really went into it. But I guess, like, Mario was has a kid that's like that, apparently. Uh, the Arkhams, which I'm sure they have their complicated circumstances. And the crown dude. I'm, I'm curious. So looking into the crown name for a, just a tiny bit of Googling, I could be mistaken. The only name I saw come up, there was some other stuff, but one name in particular came up was like an able crown. So it's like a crime lord in Gotham. So kind of like, kind of fits in that same vein. I don't know if it's supposed to be of the same ilk because the name crown didn't immediately jump out to me, like unlike the others did. So regardless, that is just interesting to know, like, Marcus's way of kind of getting revenge is basically taking down the group that's basically meant to silence kids like him. It's like, oh yeah, we're all kind of jacked up and circumstances made us what we are and you want to basically, uh, you try to uh, hide us away just to keep your power, like your power and position. So like Barbara in particular, he started pumping her full of drug, all the drugs she put into her son and... Um, because he, it seemed like he got to everyone because luckily later on... Um, Batwoman's able to get to Barbara, and it seems like she's okay to some extent, but the others look like they're straight up dead, so. And it's also interesting to know that, like, uh, the buzzer, he wanted to use it on um, Jada, because it's like, oh, cool, like, I guess, like, his ultimate revenge would be basically making her mad like he is, which, there's a lot of madness going on with all the stuff he's doing, plus Alice losing her mind, seeing Ocean, then Mouse, you know, talking about the fact is, like, oh, what you did to me, you killed me at our tea party, you poisoned me, then put a rat on my chest to attract bats, which said bats would then, like, bite him, absorb his blood, and then spread the illness around. Uh, but despite everything, uh, Alice wasn't going to let uh, Marcus just have his way because she decided, like, no, no, I'm going to stop you because I need that buzzer. It needs to cure me. But Marcus is like, no, like, you don't have to do that, like... I don't want you to get rid of yourself. I mean, you are basically the queen bee of crime. Like, the terror you brought upon, upon Gotham, I don't want you to ever go away. And I loved him being like, right, you could be the Harley to my Joker, which I love. She's like, actually, you got that backwards. I love it because it's like, yeah, I've been, I've been in the criminal game for a while. You're, you're still in the junior leagues, kid. So it almost kind of has that feel to it, which I, I, I was almost halfway expecting her to make a reference of, uh, yeah, like, well, we know where Har Harley stands in a lot of continuities, where she stands in the DCEU, like, you know, with uh, suicide, both Suicide Squad movies slash Birds of Prey, um, plus also, like, where Harley stands in the, um, there's no Joker in her life in the um, animated series, obviously it's her and Ivy, but still. So, I thought she was going to make some reference about that being like, uh, yeah, like, Oh, uh, the Joker and Harley, like, yeah, that's so forever ago, so, like, no, don't make it, but it's like, no, 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 I'm the Joker in this relationship, you're the Harley of it all, so. But what I really liked is when, like, they got on that, made that whole point about the, like, the Joker and on the bus and everything, I was like, wait, are they about to tie that, and they do. The day that he was born was the day she was also born, because the bus that crashed into, I don't know if they'd ever talked about, like, why that accident happened. I... I don't remember, like, once again, that was a season one thing, so, like, maybe they did cover that that was a Joker attack. That's fascinating, but knowing, like, oh, like, he's like, we were fated to be together, like, the day we were born was the day, um, 
So it's only befitting that we circle back into each other's lives like this. Now it's like we're meant to be in a very psychotic, very Joker and Harley type of way. Um, I mean, it was almost befitting too because like, well, the Joker quote unquote made Harley. So it's almost befitting to some extent that he would basically accidentally make the next generation of him and Harley to an extent, at least with the analogy they're kind of going for. It's just fascinating to think about. Which is also interesting because, like, this episode dealing with couple stuff, too, because it's like, oh, yeah, the whole uh, Ryan and uh, Sophie thing because uh, Ryan didn't tell Luke about the fact is that uh, there's something going on between them. And it's like, she's like, yeah, I, I didn't, I'm not hiding it from Luke. It's just none of his business. And it's like, yeah, it kind of rubs Sophie the wrong way, uh, which we'll get to that in a second. Uh, but I was curious what it was that Alice ended up offering um what she ended up offering Marcus for him to give her the buzzer, but luckily Sophie showed up and so did Batwing and sadly and it's so it's actually really heartbreaking to see Alice be like, No, Sophie, please like don't take me back to uh Arkham. Like please give me that buzzer. Like it's her only means because if she goes back to Arkham, she, she's not gonna get better. Like that could be, that was her her um, holy grail, that was like her last chance at, you know, becoming Beth again and kind of getting rid of the ghosts that are haunting her and her hallucinations and her mind being stable again. Um, but it's like, right, you don't, do you really deserve your second shot after all of this? Marcus, like, I don't know, man, because they're both victims in their own right. Like, even though I'm kind of like, despite all that she's done, like, why is it that Marcus gets more of a um, forgiveness than... Um, Alice, especially considering like everything Alice went through, uh, not just Carthright, but even being brainwashed uh, by Enigma. Like it's like, come, like I feel so bad for her because it's like, yeah, once again, she was. It's it's not a nature versus nurture thing. I mean, just like in um, just like uh, Marcus's case, it's still were exterior circumstances that made them who they are. So I just wish. I, I do legitimately feel bad for her, especially like her crying out like that. Please, no, I don't want to go. Like it just, it's like, oh, you legitimately feel bad for Alice because there's a lot of times you, you're just like you in the grand scheme, you'll feel bad for her, you'll feel empathetic towards her, but then also just like she'll do stuff where you're just like, ah, oh, like the empathy kind of disappears. And one of those in that moment, I think that's the most empathetic I've ever been towards Alice, and just seeing her so vulnerable like that in that moment. But I did like the. Uh, confrontation between Ryan and Marcus where he was like right um he's like oh like you're gonna talk about how like because she was like oh I used to be jealous of you he was like oh yeah because oh yeah like despite what happened to my brain being sc uh, scrambled but hey like I got to go to this and she's like yeah but you had every opportunity thrown to you you had people who cared about you I kind of had nothing it's like so at one point in time she did feel jealous for at him but now it's just like you know, she wants to try and save him because they are family. But um, when the time comes, Jada's like, right, if you don't stop, I will. It's like, oh, you'll shoot. You won't shoot your son. It's like, yeah, but you're not my son. And it's like, because she abandoned her daughter before. She wasn't about to abandon her now. So, but they do have the buzzer. So they do have their one shot at saving Marcus now. And even later on, uh, Ryan's asking for like 24 hours. Give me 24 hours to try and save Marcus. After that, it, it's out of take it out of my hands and do what you have to. Um, but I also love that it led to uh, Sophie and her talking because Sophie talks about the fact that she's never been in an out relationship before. Uh, because like right, her and Kate were on the down low. Her and uh, home dude what was it Tyler? Like that whole relationship. So it's like she's never been out with you know outwardly out with someone. Um, obviously, Ryan has, and obviously, Kate has, but I thought it was uh, interesting. So, for her, it almost felt like, now that she's in a position that she found someone that she is willing to, like, oh, I'm ready to be out with someone, and that person wants to kind of keep it a secret, it stung a little. But for Ryan, it's like, right, a lot of good things in my life, when, just when things get good for me, that's when they end up getting taken away from me. So that's why she was kind of reluctant to kind of like, because if you make it public, it's like, right, it makes it real and it makes it possible to have that taken from you. So it is the thing of like, yeah, like I could take you to meet my mom. It's like, yeah, like got to find out how Jordan is like, and I love Ryan be like, Jordan obviously loves me. Um, if we got to see your mom, I could wear the bat suit. And it's like, no, she's going to try and kill me and not you, but still. 
And I even love when Mary comes in, she's like, wait, did you? Oh my God, looks like, what's going on? Oh my God, you guys are a thing. And she's so giddy for them and so happy. It's like, it's super adorable. But part of me is almost like wondering, is Mary overcompensating? Because she, well, she says like, oh, we need good news. It's like, yeah, she's overcompensating because of all the bad that's happened recently. So needed to kind of bridge that with some good. So you two being a thing, it's awesome. Uh, makes you wonder when potentially the whole her and Luke thing is going. I'm sure that probably took a step back after the whole Poison Mary thing, but we'll see. I did think it was interesting when she did visit Alice, and I was like, oh, you're not going to be able to bring her to Buzzard. It's like, yeah, but she's like, yeah, let this be like my final parting gift. But she's like, I am sorry. I'm like, what did you do? Because she had told uh, Marcus, like, cool, I could give you the thing that will make you basically have a bigger splash than the Joker. And I'm like, what would that be? Getting him into the Batcave is that. It is the sanctum that uh, the Joker, I guess, in his continuity never had that opportunity. So, you know, it's only like for like someone of the Joker ilk, you know, in this case, Marcus, being in the sanctum of the Bats. It's almost befitting and it's like, all right, let's uh, let's have some fun. So what chaos he'll ensue there, we'll ultimately have to wait and see. But uh, it's going to be fascinating to ultimately see how this all plays out. Uh, the next episode is the season finale, so it's going to be interesting to see how they wrap this all up. Will Ryan be able to save Marcus? Yes, no. Will he end up getting put down? Will he get saved? And even if he gets saved, will he be scot-free from all he's done? It's like, will he get locked up? So many different ways. I don't think this is going to have the happily ever after. There's also the thing with Alice, like what happens there too, considering she set this all in motion. We'll ultimately have to wait and see. Uh, but really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.